Hey, what's up everybody? BDO44 coming at you another video. All right, so what are we talking about? What am I holding here? These are the names of all of the All-Stars for 2023. The game's going to be in Utah uh, in about two weeks. Two weekends from now, I believe it is. And uh, I got a list of the players that did make the team, and then I wrote down a bunch of names that I understand to be snubs. Um, so I checked all the major publications, checked what everyone else had to say. I actually didn't use any of my own thinking in regards to that snub list. None at all. So let's see what is being said here. All right. Uh, the East, your starters are going to be Giannis, KD, Donovan Mitchell, Kyrie Irving, and Jason Tatum. Um, your reserves are going to be Drew Holiday, Tyrese Halliburton. Julius Randle, Joel Embiid, DeMar DeRozan, Jalen Brown, and Bam Adebayo. We'll get straight into the next names. In the Western Conference, you got for your starters, LeBron James, Steph Curry, Luka Doncic, Kola Jokic, and Zion Williamson. And your reserves are going to be Paul George, Shea Gildress Alexander, Jaron Jackson Jr., Dame Lillard, Laurie Markkinen, John Morant, and DeMontis Sabonis. Uh, so, you know, I don't have a problem with most of these names. When I say most, honestly, I do mean that. I don't think that we have a problem with players making the list. I think we just need more names to be added to the list, uh, more names added to the team. That It's not a, necessarily that any of these guys didn't deserve to be there. It's just that the other people also did. Um, names like Jaron Jackson are, are starting to make some noise as players that people don't think should be there. I understand it was some type of... Uh, situation where maybe his numbers were being recorded wrong or something i only hear that in hearsay i haven't looked up the information on that i don't i didn't hear about that any more so than just in passing so i don't know what went on there but the point is it seems like some really interesting details going on in regards to everybody's opinion about jaron jackson and whether or not he deserves to be there from what i understand he's been an excellent defensive player all year long blocking shots and all kinds of other stuff um that that cannot be denied but what i also understand is that he was a slumping three-point shooter of catastrophic proportions when he ran into my lakers and we talked about it on this channel quite a bit leave him back there and he's gonna brick and he bricked like crazy it worked like a charm so i don't know if that should change anybody's mind about anything at all but that's just the facts um so i understand people aren't happy about that another name it's Paul George, and I know Paul George has been balling all year. Kawhi Leonard ain't been there, and the Clippers are a pretty damn good team, so you got to give him his credit. They got a lot of talent around him as well. You want to give credit to, to, to the majority of their squad, plus they got a fantastic coach in Ty Lue. But um, I can definitely see where other people would want to see some other names ahead of Paul George based on the snub, snub list. Um, I didn't have any problems with the starters except for the fact that Zion kind of made it without actually playing enough games to make it make sense. Uh, but you can't look at that as him getting in over others who were snubbed on the reserve list because, of course, he was voted in by the fans. So it's not one of those situations where you can blame uh, the voters um, behind the scenes for anything that happened in regards to Zion Williamson. And I think that's what a lot of the sentiment is. Zion doesn't deserve to be there versus someone else. It's like, but the fans voted in me. Y'all did that. <laughs> can't blame the coaches and the players for that one. Uh, and in the Eastern Conference, you see a lot of names. On here that you know in my opinion the bam out of bio uh situation here it's the same thing as jaron jackson you can kind of see where people would look at that name and say why is he there over his own teammate jimmy butler you know you know that's an example but for me bam is, is another representation of what we're seeing in jaron jackson is the voters wanting defense to be given more credence more respect and more shine it's what we were talking about in regards to patrick beverly in one video uh, where we were talking about all the good things that he does on the defensive end, doesn't get looked at as a superstar uh, in, in terms of how much he impacts them, you know, in, in, in whatever he does, it doesn't get as much credence because, you know, of the fact that it doesn't show up in the stats. Unless he's getting a bunch of block shots or steals, you really can't tell a defender has really done a whole lot. Um, you can look at the, the player he was guarding and see that he struggled, but a lot of times they don't give that player the credit for defending that player. More so than just say a guy was off or what have you. So I think that's one of those things where you're trying to change the culture in regards to how people respect defense, how they view defensive players. Um, and so this is what they're doing. They're making sure that those players are getting more shine this season. And I can't say that I don't appreciate it because I, I lobby for it. Um, 
And so I just have to adjust my mind to it just the same. You look for great scorers to be in this situation, but essentially what they're saying is them dudes only help one side of the ball in a lot of cases. You love those guys, but they ain't doing nothing on the defensive end. And so as we don't celebrate defensive players for not showing up on the offensive end, they're flipping that on the axis, so to speak, and trying to change the culture in a way to where you start representing and respecting what these defensive players do as superstar shine. Paul George is over here for the defensive side of the ball. Jaron Jackson's over here for the defensive side of the ball. Bam Adebayo's over here for the defensive side of the ball. Drew Holiday's over here for the defensive side of the ball. And that's really what you're looking at here. It's exactly what you're looking at. So I understand what they're doing. Uh, it's just it's just an eyesore because we've been used to a culture where offensive players who don't play defense are superstars. And they got snug because they don't defend. <laughs> I kid you not. Uh, this is exactly what you're seeing here. <clears throat> so let's talk about those snubs. Who don't you see? Jalen Brunson. He's a good player. He should be here. I think he plays good enough defense and good enough offense. He should be here. James Harden. We know he's not known for defense. He should be here. We know James Harden should be there. He should be there. Jimmy Butler. I don't follow Jimmy Butler enough this season, and I know he's known for the defensive side, so I'm not even going to put his name in that conversation. But what I will say is he's missed some games. Check me out of the conversation. Not qualified to talk about it. I just don't follow enough to know. I'd imagine listening to other people, they think he deserves to be there over his teammate. Bam, what do I know? Uh, Trey Young. Don't play no defense. He doesn't play defense, and this is the situation I was telling you about. DeJounte Murray came in and took something from Trey Young's overall star power. It's just like anything else. When you bring a superstar to you and you're a superstar, it's almost impossible to get MVP because that other superstar is going to cancel you out. And that is what has happened here to Trey Young in a way. His superstar is taking a, 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 a split, I guess you can say, when DeJounte Murray came in. Now they cancel each other out. As to where a guy like Trey Young would get automatically voted in, that ain't how it's going now. It's just not how that's going to be as long as he's playing with that player next to him. And I think that that was a problem in the first place. That's why I thought they should not have done this. I understood what they were doing. And if you're looking to move on from Trey Young, which it looks like they are, having DeJounte in place makes sense. So I, I get it. But now it's like you got to move on from Trey, I guess, it seems, at this point. Uh, because this type of stuff is going to start happening to him. And he ain't going to accept it. <laughs> Pascal Siakam. I, I just don't really understand how he didn't make it his numbers are so incredibly good offensively his team is damn good he's he's played a lot of games i don't think he's missed too many games although my memory doesn't serve me very positively i know some of the players around him have missed games like og ananobi scotty barnes and he's been the mainstay there putting up real good numbers the entire time as far as i could tell so him not being there is a ridiculous snub another name that was mentioned is Kristaps porzingis i ain't following him that much I followed Kuzma a little bit. I thought he might have been considered somebody that might be up here. Uh, but I just didn't follow their team well enough to know. Check me out of that conversation. And Darius Garland. He missed some games, but no more games than some of these other guys that did make the team. Darius Garland should definitely be there. Uh, incredible player. We know he should be there. Now, on the west side, you know, you have Aaron Gordon, who's known for his defense, who's on a good Denver team, uh, who's putting up career numbers. Um... A lot of people feel like he was snubbed, man. You know, a lot of people feel like he's been snubbed. He's played a lot of games. You know what I mean? He hasn't missed anything. And it, it, Denver's been at the top of the West. So by the way of the criteria, based on his defensive abilities, uh, he should be there. But you're going to see some other names that are even bigger than him that also aren't here. Devin Booker, he missed a lot of games, but he's also not an all-star this year. That's very strange to a lot of people, given how well he was playing before he got hurt. Uh, Anthony Davis, for the stretch of time that he was playing well. Uh, obviously, he was a top three player in the league. It's kind of weird not having him in this all-star game, knowing what level he was displaying at certain pockets of the time of the season. Um, Ant-Man, Anthony Edwards of the, Eastern, uh, of the uh, Minnesota Timberwolves, obviously a high-level shooting guard uh, that, that will always make all-star teams in his career, which is why this doesn't make much sense because he should always be there. And De'Aaron Fox, um, the number one player to get snubbed every single season of his career, basically. Just like Dame Lillard had happened to him to start his career, they're doing the exact same thing to De'Aaron Fox. He's getting the Dame Lillard treatment. You know what I mean? There's just certain players that they allow themselves to snub because it's easy to do so. I don't know what the science is behind that other than the fact they just feel like other players may be more uh, worthy in whatever given criteria they're looking at. But 
De'Aaron Fox has met that criteria to be an all-star for many years in a row. And the fact that his team is winning now should be the only thing that would have otherwise kept him from getting in there, which was, um, you know, losing. He's not. His team's good, very good, and he's at the helm. He hasn't missed games. He's putting up star numbers. He's picking teams apart. He's clutch. You know, he, he was the sole reason why my Lakers couldn't win the first game against the Sacramento Kings. We just couldn't stop him. It's just killing us. So for him not to be here is ridiculous. Nothing short. I mean, one of the biggest draws to the NBA right now is the beam in Sacramento. It's, one, it's the best gimmick probably the game has had in a very long time. So it's not like they don't have all eyes on Sacramento. They got a buzz. So for me, this is just disrespect. I mean, the fact of the matter of we've been watching him get snubbed for the last two years in a row, doing basically everything he needed to do to keep himself up, right? In a log jam with other guards, they got rid of those guards so that this wouldn't happen, and it's still happening. So I, I just, I don't, I don't think there's anything we could say other than they need to make sure he's in there next year. And God, hopefully he can have a healthy season so that we can, you know, see him deserve it. But he needs to be there, man. You look at some of the names that made it um, on the Western side of things. You just don't understand how the hell Jaron Jackson would get in over De'Aaron Fox this season. Not this season. Not given the fact that Jaron Jackson missed some games to start the season, if I'm not mistaken. You know what I mean? And so, like I said, I wouldn't bring Zion into this because it just doesn't apply. Uh, but you would love to. It would make you feel better if you could. These type of things you would love if the system didn't allow for this to happen. That's basically what it comes down to. You got fan voting screwing up crap by getting players in here that just don't deserve to be in here over some of these reserves. And you got some of the reserves that are coming in because of the, the voting that makes it so that some of these guys don't deserve to be here as much as some of the guys don't. And, you know, it's politics behind a lot of this because sometimes these guys, you know, the voters have their own agendas <laughs> and they have their own allegiances. So these type of things kind of compromise circumstances in a way as well we know last year james harden was the last guy to get voted uh on the two a team do you know what i mean when the two starters just did not choose him now you look this year what's going on he's not on the team you just wonder if it's politics behind james harden not being there and, and it just speaks to the same stuff that i say i don't like in regards to my own team and what we focus on making sure guys have minutes uh over making sure that we have the right schemes on the floor to defeat the team that we're going up against. Now, these type of things are just driven by the wrong things, and as a result, you get the wrong results. You see uh, scales that are that are measuring things improperly, and, and, and they're telling you players should be in situations and shouldn't be in situations when that's not what you see when you watch the game. So that's what it really comes down to. You know, by way of the score, the, the, not the scorecards, but the voting booth, or the, by way of the way they vote, you see really wacky stuff like <laughs> like Jaron Jackson being an all-star over uh, Devin Booker, stuff like that. Like that's, that's never supposed to happen, <laughs> like ever. Even if Devin Booker misses time, the level Devin Booker played, didn't we see Devin Booker score like... A ridiculous amount of points earlier in the season before he got hurt or something like that. I mean, these type of things just shouldn't happen. Ant-Man's one of the rising stars in this entire league. Him getting snubs, we're not better for that. You think the All-Star game is a better watch if Ant-Man is not a part of it, but we get a chance to watch, you know what I mean, Paul George again? I mean, we've seen Paul George in the All-Star team many times. I think that's what people are saying. We want to see some guys... If it's a little sway or whether or not a new guy versus a guy who's been there a million times gets it, it should probably be the new guy, don't we think? Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe not. I am happy to see Laurie Markin come in and get his first all-star appearance. Obviously, Jaron's is his first. Congratulations, Shea Gildress Alexander. That was a, a no-brainer. He probably should have been starting this season. So congratulations to him getting his first, I believe. Uh, ja, of course, got to be there. We know that. <laughs> Dame, the way he's played, that's a no-brainer. The Sabonis, like I said earlier in the year, that's that. Any All-Star team that didn't have him involved in it this season didn't hold any credibility with me. That's just how well he's been playing, in my opinion. Braun is a no-brainer. Steph is a no-brainer. Luka the Don, Jokic, all of those guys have to be there. Zion, you just wish he was healthy. Obviously, he would have earned his way there if he were. And so the fans have it right based on his what they think he'll be able to do for and what they what he's capable of doing, but not necessarily what he's earned. And so I think fans... Uh, you know, they're going to vote the way they vote, man. You can't ask people to, to know more. It just is what it is. 
but you know, like the Bam out of bio thing, you know, I'm not really following, so I just don't know, but there are just so many bigger names. That's what it really comes down to. When you're talking about, you know, Trey Young and James Harden not a part of your all-star team. I mean, is Utah really happy about this? Be, given the fact that they're going to be uh, hosting the all-star game. I mean, I love Drew Holiday as much as the next guy, but I mean, no Trey Young, <laughs> no Jimmy, no James Harden. I don't know, man. No Anthony Davis? I don't know, man. It just seems to me that y'all left a lot of money on the board trying to make, trying to prove a point. It's bad enough y'all got it in a place like Utah. It's going to bring, you know what I mean? No no offense, but it is what it is. And then you're going to bring them basically the beef team. I don't know. The NBA has its own agenda, man. I'm telling y'all, we're seeing remnants of this agenda all over the place. All over the place. And it has to do with a lot of stuff that has nothing to do with the game. Now they get to say, okay, Trey Young ain't worth this amount because he didn't make the All-Star team that year. Okay, now James Harden doesn't get this amount on his extension because he didn't make the All-Star team last year. Jalen Brunson's contract ain't worth as much now because he didn't make the All-Star team that first. These are the type of things they can screw around with. Don't act like the fans don't know this. Don't act like we're in the dark about all that. We're not. BDL 44. Thank you all for watching.